Good morning. Jeep Gladiator battery voltage check. Is the battery the reason my auto stop is having problems? Let's take a look. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here. That's right. We're going to check the Jeep Gladiator battery charge. You know, somebody left me a comment on one of the videos that you could use the screen, scroll through, and find a readout that will tell you whether or not the battery is charging in the Jeep Gladiator. I did not know that. So I thought, you know, in my ongoing quest to solve my uh, auto stop, and if you don't know, I've been having troubles with that. I keep getting a, a malfunction warning or a light that shows up on the gauge cluster telling me that the auto stop system is not working. And several people have suggested that maybe the auxiliary battery, you know, that little battery that sits below the fuse panel, you have an auxiliary battery for that auto stop system, is not charging. And that's what's causing me to have the problem. So I thought it would be interesting to check and see. And I haven't started the Jeep yet this morning. So it sat out overnight. I did leave it outside. So it would be nice and cold for what cold is here. I think it's, uh, I don't know, 50. So it's 60 degrees right now. So cold for where I am. Uh, but we're going to start it out. We're going to scroll through this screen, see if I can find that and indeed see if the battery is charging. And, uh, and then we'll go for a ride. Okay, we've got the truck all started up here. Let's see if we can find this battery screen. Um, let's see, right there. Well, that was pretty darn easy. Uh, what else is in here real quick? Vehicle info gives you uh, oil percentage, I guess, to where you need to change it. I have down to 41%. Uh, the oil PSI 31, temperature 93, that's because the truck's been running for a couple minutes. Uh, 64 degrees on the transmission temperature, 123 degrees on coolant, so we're heating up pretty quick. Remember, we started at 60. Uh, tire pressures, looks like my right front tire could use a couple pounds. Uh, and then back to the battery voltage. All right, so right there you can see we're at 14.6. It does not say battery charging. Now, let me tell you, I don't believe that that is, of course, the auxiliary battery. That's probably either the whole system combined or just the main battery. But I want to take a quick drive around and see if that changes in any way. In other words, if it reduces, goes up, maybe it'll just stay the same. That's what I expect, but let's go for a ride and then we'll come back on and see if there's any difference there with that battery voltage. Okay, been out driving for a bit, and I did see something interesting. Um, I didn't get all of it on video, but a little bit. I'll show you right here. Now you can see it actually dropped down a little bit. It only dropped down to 14.5 there, and it's fluctuating back and forth right now um, between 14.6 and 14.5. But I did notice as I was cruising along and then I came to a stop, it actually dropped down to 14.1 was the lowest that it's gotten. I'm stopping now and it's at 14.5, back up to 14.6. Now, I must admit, first of all, I'm not a, uh, an alternator expert by any means, but I'm wondering if in part of uh, today's current setup, or maybe this is how they always work, that the alternator is not always 
generating power or charging up the battery. In other words, it only kicks on or trips uh, when it needs to be on, when it senses that the voltage is dropping, right? Makes sense to me why run all the time if you're only needed when you're needed. So I don't know if that's true or not, just an interesting tidbit I happened to think of while I was driving. But never did I see uh, any indication on the screen that the battery was charging. So even though it dropped down, uh, it would jump back up and there was never any indication that the alternator was charging the battery, right? So I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know, don't know that it really means anything. Frankly, I think the system is functioning properly as it should be. I think 14.6, 14.7, somewhere in there is, uh, is the normal range uh, for battery voltage from what I've experienced over the years. Now, let me say this uh, gauge that's in the Jeep isn't anything special to the Jeep. I mean, most vehicles have some sort of a battery voltage meter or something in them. So you should be able to see that on your Jeep or any other vehicle that you're driving. You may have to scroll through the screen like I did to find it, but chances are it's there. And on older cars, of course, it was just a, a little needle gauge, right? The gauge would kind of go to where the battery was reading. Um, so I guess the big question or what this answers for me, I guess, is uh, I don't think I have any problems with the battery, at least not the main battery. Again, I don't know if this gauge measures the whole system or takes into account the auxiliary battery as well. I'm just not sure. Um, if it does, then perhaps that's why I'm seeing a drop because it's accounting for the auxiliary as well and the auxiliary battery is uh, losing some voltage. I don't really know. I'm thinking probably not, but just a little bit of a test to kind of find out. I think the next step in my ongoing saga as I try to uh, figure out what's going on myself is to get the next time this comes up to give the dealer a call, impart them with all my knowledge that I've gained from you folks and point them towards the auxiliary battery and see if indeed we can get that thing replaced or at least have it checked which uh, I assume they'll be able to do in the shop so they can check it to see if it's reading the proper voltage. Although I'm not sure in driving it from my house to the dealership um, will actually yield a fair test because it's obviously going to be charging, I assume, while I'm driving the same way that the main battery does. And maybe it charges off of the main battery. I'm not exactly sure. So when I get to the dealership, it may show a, a good battery, a full charge, but not be accurate. In other words, I think it may need to actually sit for a little while to discharge, if indeed it does discharge, uh, to give an accurate uh, diagnosis of whether or not that auxiliary battery is indeed the problem. So I don't know, more things to consider. Uh, kind of ruling things out as we go here. And I know I could take it to the dealer and, and leave it sit there for who knows how long. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I would much rather go to the dealership uh, with at least a good theory, understanding what the problem might be so that I can tell them what to do, you know? I think that's always a much better practice if you're able to do that. I know we can't always do that, but like the check engine light, little bumpy parking lot here, but like the check engine part or uh, check engine warning light, I should say, you know, when I went in, we had uh, tested the code or ran the code with a scan gauge just to see what it was actually throwing. So I was able to tell them when I went in what the problem was. And I think that's always better to do. It points them in a direction so that they know what you expect at least. Anyway, let me know what you think of my little test here. We're still fluctuating between 14.6 and 14.5. Um, again, I think it's normal, no issues there. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Also, real quick, if you're interested, check out my other channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 
still trouble free, free Toyota Tacoma. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.